Corporate finance practice problem using Excel. We're going to be using the present value and future value of annuity calculations to run a scenario related to a college saving plan, which we're going to basically update mid saving point. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet and would like to follow along, note that we are in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. We're going to have the information on the left hand side. We'll populate that information into the blue area on the right hand side. Like with similar problems in the past, we will do each component multiple different ways. If you want to just go through the practice problem faster, calculate it one way for each part, go ahead and skip forward through the practice problem as you choose the basic scenario is going to be that we're saving for college in the future four-year college and we're trying to put the money in place in order to plan for that we already have some savings that we have set up in the past in the format of an annuity and now we're trying to shore up and say okay what more might we need to put in to meet our goal so here's going to be the scenario we got the future college cost we're going to say forty thousand per year four years so we're going to say four years of college it's going to cost forty thousand per year the college is going to start in five years so we have five years to shore up any savings in order to have the money to fund the college we're going to also say that we set up a prior year annuity the prior year annuity has uh, five thousand four hundred per year that's going into the annuity it's been in place for five years in the past so we could kind of think about where it stands at this point in time but it's also going to continue to to go forward. So the annuity is going to continue for the next five years up until the point of college. And, and therefore, we need to think about what's going to happen with that annuity. The rate is going to be 9% for everything that we're going to be working with. Uh, these payments will be continue until the first year of college. How much are the payments needed to, to reach the goal? So then the next thing we're going to do, so you can imagine the scenario here, right? We got college, four year, 40,000. We need to basically have an annuity of that uh, of those four years of the 40,000 payments to think about how much money we're going to need after the next five years in order to basically pay for the college. That's how we're going to that's how we're going to basically map this thing out. And then we need to think about this annuity that we already set up and what will be the future value as of the date that we're going to start college so we've already had it in place in the past we can look at where we stand now but it's going to continue on so we could say where's this going to be at in the future in five years what's going to be the future value in five years when we start the uh, the college payments and then uh, we can then think about okay if we're short on funds to pay for the college then how much more might we need to put into another kind of annuity for five years in order to meet the objective to meet the goal? Okay, so we're going to start off with the college. We're going to say this is a four-year type of thing, 40000 a year. Let's bring that, those funds back to the present value as of the first day uh, of the college, this, the first year of the college period. So we're going to bring that back first, and that's going to be done with a present value uh, of an annuity. Present value of an annuity is, is the formula. We could do this multiple di different ways, which we will do. Easiest way probably would be in Excel with a function, which we'll do shortly. But calculation of the formula first, which would be P times 1 minus 1 plus R to the negative N over R. So we'll go ahead and break that out. We're going to break that out into our tables as we've seen in the past. I'm going to put the P and this whole thing on the outside and then bring the other components into the inner columns. This is going to be equal then to P which is going to be the 40,000. And then we're going to go to the inside. I'm going to break out the one in its own column. So I'm going to say one, and then I'm going to pull in this uh, one plus R to the negative N. So I'm going to say in the inner column one, and then R is going to be equal to the 9% for everything. Percentifying that home tab numbers, percentify, underlining it, home tab, font, underline, summing it up equals the SUM of those two items percentifying that home tab numbers percentify and then we're going to take that to the negative number of periods the negative n this is for the four years because we're trying to we're looking at the the annuity of the college years here the annuity of the college years is going to be the home tab font and underline we'll bring this then to the next column over this is going to be equal to the 109 carat shift six carat four and adding decimals home tab numbers decimalizing it and then we'll underline it home tab font underline 
So now we're going to subtract out and we'll have the end of the numerator here. This is going to be equal to 1 minus that number and then decimalize it. Home tab number, decimalize it like so. And then we're going to have the denominator, denominator R. So we're going to be picking up R is going to be the 9%. Percentifying that, home tab, numbers group, percentify, underlining it, home tab, font, underline We'll bring this into the outer column now. This is going to be the numerator divided by the denominator. Adding some decimals, home tab numbers, add a few decimals there, decimalizing it. In other words, home tab font underline. We can finally multiply the outer column, that being the 40,000 times that number that we came to. So we have 129,589. Let's add a couple decimals here, home tab numbers, add some pennies. So there are the pennies. So that's what, we, that's what we're going to basically shoot for then that we need at basically the start of the college years. We've got five years to get there. Uh, but we also have this annuity that we kind of already started at this point. So we can see where that will be at the end and then see how much, like, how much more we need to put in for the five years to get to that goal of the 129,588.80 at the beginning of the college years. Now you can jump forward to the next component if you want to look at the next component in this method but we're going to recalculate this a couple different ways most common way probably being with the with the formulas so let's do that first and then i'll do this running balance table so if you did this with a with a formula we'd say okay this is going to be equal to i'm going to say negative present value shift nine this is what you do in practice as opposed to a book problem most likely we'd say the nine percent comma number of periods is going to be four on the periods and then comma and then we want the payment which is going to be that 40,000 40,000 so there is that and we say enter and it just does it magic like magic like let's go ahead and and so we get a better understanding run a running balance table so I'm going to say one two three four on the left hand side and we're just going to present value this annuity just present value of one so we can see each each one of these payments pulled back to the beginning of the annuity so it's going to be the 40,000. We'll just present value one each time instead of present value of an annuity. Negative, present value, shift nine, rate 9%, comma. And then the number of periods, we're going to say this is going to be one because we're pulling this first payment uh, back, just one payment, comma, comma, because it's not an annuity. Nope, I shouldn't call it a payment. It's present value of one, I guess. And then this is going to be the future value and enter then we'll say that's going to be the same amount let's do it again the payment's going to be the same for year two of college here second year of college it's going to be negative present value shift nine rate nine percent again comma number of periods now two comma comma and then the future value is that forty thousand. enter so then we could say if we present value these two the prior balance plus the current balance that's where we stand at this point. We're going to continue that on down to four periods, but let's first absolutize what we need to absolutize. And that's going to be the rate right there in E6. We don't want that to move down when I copy it down. So we're going to put our cursor in E6 and we're going to select F4 on the keyboard, which puts a dollar sign before the E and the six, otherwise known as absolutizing it, making it an absolute reference. And I'm going to select these three cells. Note, you only need a mixed reference, but absolute works. So I'm going to drag this on down. Oh, something funny happened there. Huh. Something funny happened, but it still worked, I think. It worked funny-like, but it still worked. So there's the 129,588. That looks good. Let's do it one more time with the tables. Table time, because the tables are fun to do it with. So we're going to say this is going to be the 40,000. We'll look it up on the table then table making sure you got the proper table ours is always the proper table because it's our editing team put the proper table down there that's going to be the nine and four nine percent and four nine percent and four it's going to be three point two three nine seven 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 and multiplying this out forty thousand times that number and we get the 129,588, close to what we have over here, slightly different due to the table rounding out to four digits. Okay, second component of the problem. We now have, have figured out what our goal is going to be as of the starting point. 
Now we need to think, okay, this annuity that we set up already, like, um, where's that going to get us? Because it's going to, it's going to, it's been going for five years and it's going to continue for another five years, apparently until the college starts. So where will we be at that point in time and how close are we to our goal? So we got to, we got to figure that out. So it says down here, we've, we've been putting 5,400 into, into a, a payment annuity where, where we're going to get 9% return, we're saying. And we've been doing that for five years and we're going to imagine we're doing it five years into the future so what i'll do we'll just basically take this and take it for the full 10 10 year time period and that should get us where we would be uh, as of the point in time that we start putting money in uh, the college starts as of the point in time that college would basically start and then we can compare and contrast that to the last number we got to to see how much more we, we might need to be putting in somewhere. Okay, so we'll take, we'll take this is going to be the future value of an annuity, right? And that's going to be the formula down here. Future value of annuity is going to be the P times 1 plus R to the N minus 1 over R. And that's because we're trying to figure out where we will be in, you know, five years that we're going to have the periods of 10, imagining that when we started this, we put the money in and see where we would be at the end of the period which would be the starting point of the college time. So we're going to say, let's break this formula out into a table, and then we'll do it with Excel as well. So we're going to pull that into the outer column. We're going to pull the first component, which is going to be P. So P is going to be equal to the 5,400 that we're putting in. And then we're going to pull inside the 1 plus R to the N. So there's the 1 plus the R to the N. So I'm going to put the... So we're going to put that in the inside. We'll put that here one, and then we're going to have the rate. Rate is going to be then the 9%. We'll percentify that. Home tab, numbers, percentify, underline, home tab, font, underline. We'll add those two up with the trusty sum function equals the SUM, the sum of the nine, the one, enter. Percentifying that, home tab, numbers, percentify. Then we're going to take that to the number of periods. Now, this is a little tricky because you might think, well, am I doing like the five years that had in the past or five years in the future? We really want to do the whole 10 years to see where we will be from this whole annuity as of the point in time the college starts. And it was going five years in the past. And then it's going to continue to go five years in the future. If we have the same rate, then we can just do an annuity type of calculation for the 10 time, 10 period time period. So we're going to say the five plus the five here. I'll do it that way to indicate what we're talking about. And then underline home tab font and underline. And then we're going to take this and multiply it or not multiply it to the power of 109% shift six to the power of N 10. Adding some decimals, home tab numbers, decimalizing it. And there we have that. Then we're going to subtract out one. So we're still on the numerator here. Finally, we're subtracting out one. And then I'm going to pull that to the outside, but underline first home tab font underline pulling this out to the other next column over this equals that 2.3 so on minus the one adding decimals home tab numbers decimalizing it and so there we finally have the numerator the denominator simply r r so we're going to say r make that a percent home tab numbers percentify it underline it home tab font underline it then we can take the numerator and divide it by the denominator because that's what we do with numerators and denominators. Numerator divided by over the denominator. Add in a couple decimals, home tab, font group, decimalizing it, not just a cusp, couple decimals, completely decimalized. That's what we did to it. And then we're going to multiply these two out. This is going to be equal to the 4,500 times that decimalized number. And then we'll just add a couple decimals here. This will be the pennies. Home tab, number, add a couple decimals. Let's underline this one up top. Home tab, font, underline. Okay. So that means that this is going to get us to this 8241, 82, like when college starts. But we need, like what we're looking for based on our prior calculation, which I'm going to pull over, not from the table because I want it to be more exact. I'm going to pull it over from our Excel calculation. We need that much. So we're short, we're, we're gonna be short. And so that's not good. So I'm gonna subtract this minus that. We need another $47,000 in order to pay for this. This is, this is ridiculous. What, okay, whatever, we're gonna do it. We've committed anyways. I don't know, but anyway, 
So now let's, let's do this a couple more times. Now we're going to have to figure out how much more we're going to have to put in for five years to get up to that 47, 5, 46, 97. But before we get there, we'll calculate this one a couple more ways. The most common way you would calculate this component would probably be, once again, with an Excel formula in practice. And that would be a negative future value, future value, shift 9. The rate is going to be the 9% comma number of periods is going to be 10 comma and then the payment is going to be the 5400 and enter so there we have it once again done the magic way and then we can also do it with um with a running balance type of calculation so we're gonna, we'll do that because that'll be fun so this is going to be then equal to we're going to have the payment 4500 4500 We'll just equal the payment and then we'll calculate the interest for the 10 period. So we're going to say this is going to be equal to the 4,500 times the 9%. And then the payment is going to be 5,400, not 4,500, 5,400. Sorry about that. Sometimes I do that. Apologies. This equals the 5,400 plus the 486 plus the 5,400. Let's do it again. This equals the new balance, the 11,286 times the rate, 10%. And then the payment's going to be the same. We can then say this equals the prior balance plus the interest plus the payment that went in. Let's do it one more time and then use our autofill. This is going to be equal to the 17,702 times the rate, 9%. Payment is the same, 5,400. Value then being equal to the prior point. 17702 plus the interest plus the payment let's copy this on down before we do we might need to absolutize something that typically being something over here in the in the set numbers everything else will move down properly as tables typically do so that nine percent over there that's the one we don't want that to move and we say excel don't move that and the way we do it is we say f4 on e z5 z5 putting our cursor in z5 selecting F4 on the keyboard or dollar sign before the Z and five telling Excel, don't you move that. Don't you move that down. Don't you start with me. So we'll select those items and then we'll auto fill them down, auto fill. And there we have it again, done it again. Let's do it one more time with the, uh, with the tables. Cause that's always good times. Tables are going to be equal to the 5,400. Looking up the proper table, this being the future value of an annuity, our editors have put down the proper table right below here for us, but you might want to make sure you get the proper table. This is going to be 10, 9 and 10, 9% 9 and 10. So 9% and 10 periods. That's going to be the 15193. 15193. 15193. 15.193. 15 Multiplying this out, 5,004 times the 15,193 gives us the 82042.2, slightly different than the 82041.82 due to the tables rounding to four digits. Let's do it again over here. Well, not again. <laughs> We're going to do the last part of the problem, which we determined last time that we needed another uh, amount here, the future value added. That, so we needed more money for college because our savings that we planned last time, not enough, not enough. That's, we need another 47, 5, 46, 97 by the time college starts, which happens in five years. So we've got to get busy. So now the question is, well, how much more can I put in for those five years of like in an annuity type of format, one payment you know, per year possibly to get to that number so that we can meet the actual goal so that we can go to go to the college that we're looking at. So we'll do a future value of an annuity type of calculation here. And also note that if you if you do this in Excel and we'll take a look at it shortly, you can also do uh, the future value of an of an annuity in Excel, or you can look at the payment type of calculation, which should get you there as well. And we'll take a look at those short. First, we'll use the formula here because that's really where our focus is at. So when, when we're thinking about this, we could think about a, a future value of an annuity formula and then solve for P. So this is the one where we're going to say, okay, it kind of fits into this formula. So mathematically, I know this formula. So what I would like to do is use it, solve for the unknown, which isn't the future value of the annuity, but rather P. So we know where the end result needs to be. In other words, we need to get to that 47, 546, 
97 by putting five more payments in uh, to do it. And, and we need our annuity formula. So that's going to be the end result. The 47, 5, 46, 97 equals P, the unknown, the payment, times 1 plus R, the rate 9%, to the number of periods, which is going to be 5 at this point in time. We've got five more years to shore this up, minus 1 over R, which is once again the 5%. So note, I'm not going to, so that's one way that you can do it. We could do it algebraically, solving for P. Now, I'm not going to do it algebraically here in Excel. I'll let you write that out in Excel. I'm going to write this out the same format this way instead of solving for P algebraically and use goal seek to find the unknown so that we can practice the goal seek. But we'll also use another function, which basically the function does kind of solve for P. And we'll take a look at that as well, even though that's not kind of our major focus here because our focus is on, you know, these present value function formulas. But we'll do we'll do that as well because it's related to so let's think about this concept. Number one, do it algebraically. Number two, we're going to basically practice goal seek and then use goal seek in the function format. And then we'll do it with a payment calculation as well with a function in Excel. So if I plug this in here, the unknown would be the payment. I'm going to put in just 1000 because I don't know what it is at this point in time. And then I'm going to, I'm going to do the rest of it, which is going to be one plus R to the N. So I'll pull that to the inside. We're going to say this is going to be one plus the rate is going to be the 9%. We'll percentify that. Home tab, numbers, percentify, underline, home tab, font, underline. Sum it up with the trusty equals SUM formula. That gives us then, if we percentify it, home tab, numbers, percentify, 109. Taking that to the power of the number of periods, which is 5. And then I'll underline that, home tab, font, underline. This equals then the 109 to the power of shift 6. And there it is. Let's add decimals, home tab, numbers, decimalized. And then we're going to subtract 1 from that. That's the last part of the numerator in our calculation. We'll underline that cell, bring this out to the outer column. So this is going to be then this number minus the 1. Going to decimalize that, home tab, numbers, decimalize. And so now we've got this whole thing minus uh, this whole thing minus one, and that's going to be the numerator. Now we have the denominator, which is just the rate. This equals the percent. And then we're going to say home tab numbers percentify underline home tab font underline. And then we can divide this out, bringing it out to the outer column. This equals the numerator over or divided by the denominator. Adding some decimals, home tab numbers decimalized. And then home tab font underline. We can then multiply the outer column. This now being equal to the 1000 times that number we just calculated. Let's just add a couple decimals. Home tab number pennies added. Okay, so now we know that this end result needs to be this 475.46.97. We'll use the goal seek feature to change this number now that they are all connected to then change that number to what it should be. So this is kind of like an algebraic system in that we're just going to basically, instead of reworking it algebraically, we'll use trial and error to kind of find the missing component, thereby being able to find any missing component with an Excel worksheet that's all kind of tied together. So we're going to go to the data tab to do this. We're going to go to the what if analysis and goal seek. We want to set this cell down here to be what we need it to be, which is that 47, 47, 546.97. And we need to change the payment item up top. That's what we're trying to find. So we're going to say, seek that goal, Excel. Excel seeks it. Excel finds it. What Excel seeks, it finds. And then we got the 7944.74. That's how much we would have to put in, we're thinking, per year for the next five years to shore up the shortfall in our savings for the college because it's really expensive and then let's do this but the other way we would probably do this if we apply that goal seek to the future value calculation or we can use a payment calculation which would be the easiest thing to do but let's apply that same goal seek comment concept to the future value so once again this is a function i can't change it algebraically but instead of looking for another function which i could do but uh, there isn't but we're going to practice the future value function we could then say the unknown I'm going to put down here and then use that same goal seek function to find for the unknown. So this is going to be then equal or negative future value, future value of the rate. And then comma, 
and then the number of periods I'll say is going to be this five comma and then the payment is the unknown which we put down in this cell over here so that we can then change it and and have Excel find the proper amount so we get then our value here we know what this needs to be the end result needs to be that this needs to be that this needs to be that so we need to make this that by changing the other thing so we need to make this that by changing the other thing over here so that's what we'll do we'll do that with the goal seek so we're going to go then to the data the forecast what if analysis goal seek once again and let's see if i can remember how this works we have to change this to that seven four seven five four six point nine seven by then you changing the other thing this that to the other thing and then we're going to say okay and there it does it so it changed our end result but what we're really looking for is this number that uh or was that that's the other thing that the other thing number that's what we wanted you can also do that with a payment formula notice that this formula here this function has a payment in it if i could find the other function which basically kind of reworks the function to solve for the payment then i can do it that way as well of course and so we'll do that down here let's use the payment function negative payment pmt shift and now we'll do the same kind of thing we're going to say this is going to be the rate the rate comma and then the number of periods is going to be five and then comma and then we want the present value is going to be that 47 5 46 97 and enter and hold on a second something funny happened we don't want the present value we want the future value double clicking on it i don't want the present value that i'm going to double click on it i want the future value to be that 47 5 46 97 so once again rate payment and then future value double comma on the present value skipping to the future value that's going to give us our uh, 794474 again okay so then those are the most common ways you would do this so that basically means that as, as of this point in time to shore this thing up we need to have another annuity thing where we put in 7944.74 in so that we could shore up what we need for the college let's just calculate it a couple different ways now now that we know the answer we're going to say the payment here i'll say the payment and i, I won't do a <clears throat> a goal seek we could use a goal seek in this format as well but i'll just do a running balance just to practice that this is going to be our starting point what's going to happen if we do this kind of annuity we're going to say the interest is going to be that 7945 times the nine percent the payment once again seven nine four five the balance then being the prior balance plus the interest plus the payment. Let's do it again. The interest is going to be the value times the 9%. The payment is going to be the same. The value then is going to be the prior value plus the interest plus the payment. And if we copy that on down, we have to first make sure that we have absolutized anything we need to absolutize. Typically, the thing you make an absolute reference is the thing that you're referring to outside the table such as your data over here, 9%, that's on U AU5, 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 AU5. And then we're going to put our cursor in AU5, and then we're going to go to home. Uh, well, no, I'm going to hit F4, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the AU, dollar sign before the 5, making it absolute. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute works. So we're then going to select those cells, put our cursor on the fill handle, and drag it on down ending up once again at the 47,547. So then let's do it with the tables over here one more time. We're looking for the top number now. So can we use our tables to kind of back into the top number there? We can, although it's not always a perfect system with the tables because if the rate isn't even, you know, it could be a problem. But the end result we know, we need to, we need to be there. And then we know what the table is because we have the information on the tables, making sure we pick up the proper tables, our we have got the proper tables down below so that looking at nine percent and five periods nine percent and five periods so we're looking at nine and five nine and five that's going to be the 5.9847 5.9847 5.9847 5.9847 5 now if this times this equals that then we should be able to back into this by saying that divided by this equals the answer 
one more time that divided by this is the answer 7944.75 slightly different than this number because of the tables due to the rounding